Welcome to That's My Jam. I'm Stacy Gordon, and today we're going to talk about the water bath canning method. I've just made some really nice apple butter, and I want to get it into some jars and get it preserved so that I can put it on the shelf and enjoy it for the rest of the year. The next thing you're going to need is a great big pot. I use this big pressure cooker and it has this insert that goes in it that sits down on the bottom so that your jars aren't sitting directly on the bottom of the pot so close to the heat. This elevates them just a tiny bit. So now I'm going to put some water in this big pot. I've got my pot filled with water up to about this level so it's pretty full and I've got it on some medium high heat. Today we're going to be working with five 8 ounce mason jars. Any size jar will work with this method, but there's one thing that you absolutely need to know, and that is that the water bath canning method is not safe for all foods. Items that are safe to water bath can. Tomato based salsa, fruit based jams, jellies, preserves, butters. Those have a high acid content and they are safe for water bath canning. Items that are not safe for water bath canning, corn, green beans, carrots, things that don't naturally have a high acid content. I've already washed my jars. These are brand new ones I just got out of the box. But in addition to that, I'm gonna go ahead and lower these down into this water as it's getting hotter and hotter and ready to boil because I want to make sure that there is no contamination at all on these jars and they are perfectly clean and sterilized. Guys, I am not a fan of leaving the rings and seals in this boiling water literally more than a few seconds. So the first thing I do is pull out the ring. It is okay to touch the outside of that ring, but this seal, you don't want to touch. You want to pull that out with your magnet on the white side then you want to slip that down into your ring and don't touch it again. You don't want that contaminated, but also you don't want to leave it in the water so long that this brand new seal gets compromised. I want to get you familiar with a basic canning tool set. You usually looks something like that at the store. You can find them just about anywhere. They have four parts to them. This is a set of tongs that you use for picking up your hot jars. This is that handy dandy little magnet that I showed you earlier for picking up the uh, metal lids. This is your funnel for putting down in your jars and spooning your mixture into the jars. And this is a tool that you use to put in the side of the jar, go around to get any bubbles out. I'm not personally a very big fan of that tool, but that's what it's for. So that's your basic canning tools. Our jars are boiling pretty good now, so I feel pretty sure they are sanitized properly. We're going to take this part of the tongs and we're going to reach down in there and grab a jar. Now I have found that the best way to do that is to pull the jar up like this and then dump that water in and then you want to move this jar over and set it upright just like that. You don't want to put it upside down. I know that's tempting but that can contaminate it. Even if you think your towel is clean that can contaminate your jar. So believe me these are so hot right now that any remaining liquid that might still be in them will evaporate instantly. So what we're going to do now is fill these jars with our apple butter. Sometimes this step is a little bit messy, but we've got our funnel in there. We've got our soup ladle and we're going to just spoon this over into our sterilized jar. Ideally, we want to leave a little head space at the top of the jar. So we want to fill the jar up to about this level right here. Hopefully you were careful enough not to get anything at all on the tops of your jars. 
because if you did, I was taught in food safety training that it is not okay to touch these jars with anything, not even a paper towel. But you know what? I can't leave that on there, so I'm gonna take a clean paper towel with just a tiny bit of water, and I'm just gonna get that one little dot off of there. The rest of them look pretty good. All right, now we're gonna take our sterilized lids and rings, and we're gonna get those screwed on. And I've got this handy dandy little grabber that my friend Ruth gave me. I use that to just get that on there nice and tight because that apple butter is hot. All right, next step is to get these into our water bath. We're gonna pick these jars up just like that and we're gonna set them down in here on top of that plate. You can see the jars are sitting on that little platform that I told you about earlier and they're in some serious hot water right now. I've got the water up to the tip tops of the jars and we're gonna let that sit in there like that for at least 10 minutes. I usually go about 11 or 12. Our timer just went off, so it's been probably 10 or 12 minutes since I put these in. We're gonna use our tongs and be super, super careful getting these out. We're gonna transfer them right over to this towel. Twenty thirty 30 minutes after you take those out of the water bath, you're gonna to start to hear one of my very favorite sounds and that is the lids popping. Uh, but don't give up. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. It really just depends. So don't touch these jars at all for at least an hour or so. Just leave them alone. One thing you wanna look for though is this. If your jar is doing that, it did not seal. So that jar needs to go in the refrigerator. You can't put that on the shelf. The properly sealed jar should be down and it should stay down. Only then is it safe to put on the shelf. And when that happens, typical shelf life is usually about a year. I really hope you found this video useful and entertaining. If you did, hit that subscribe button for me, please. In the meantime, Turn off the TV, turn on some music, and just keep jamming.